Today's gospel lesson sees Jesus calling some of his first disciples. Now, just before today's lesson in the gospel of John, Jesus has been identified by Andrew and Andrew starts to follow him. And Andrew then goes and tells his brother, Peter, that he has found the Messiah and invites Peter to follow with him. Then in today's lesson, we see Jesus going about and he calls Philip and Philip responds to Jesus's call. And then Philip goes and tells Nathaniel, who then has this experience with Jesus and he also chooses to follow Jesus. All of these heard Jesus's call and they responded. Now today, as we remember Jesus calling his disciples, which will continue in our gospel lessons, I hope we wonder what we would have done if we were in their shoes. What would we potentially have said to Jesus? Now, it's easy to read these stories and to hear about the call of these disciples and to marvel at their faithfulness, to marvel at their willingness to just leave everything and follow this teacher. Now, yes, we should marvel at the faithfulness that these men show to follow Jesus. But let's consider that there could have been plenty of others who said no. Now, that's not exactly the best story to tell, so maybe they were left out. But you have to think that as Jesus goes about teaching and doing these miracles, that he would have called other people who may have just said no. I mean, imagine. People may have been too busy. They may have thought that they just couldn't follow Jesus right then, at that day, at that time. Or perhaps they didn't just trust that Jesus was legit that he was actually worth following. Perhaps they just didn't think that the call was really for them because they didn't have the right skills or the right strengths, or perhaps they just didn't think that they were worthy to be called. Now, Jesus calls each of his disciples because he sees in them the gifts that they need. He sees in them the gifts that they have to lift all their voices together and to help do God's work in the world, the work that Jesus is getting rolling in a very new way. I believe that these disciples, and we will see this play out in the Gospels, are not really exceptional. In fact, they're simply willing Jesus calls many, and I bet many say no. Jesus still calls many, and although many do say no, many do say yes. This weekend, we actually remember and recognize one of those disciples who said yes. Martin Luther King Jr. is celebrated this week with an extra day, a long weekend, but this is also an opportunity for us to imagine what saying yes and being a disciple in our world might mean today. Now, at dinner the other night, I was talking with the family about this weekend, and my youngest daughter said that they had been talking about Martin Luther King at school. And I said, well, what have you learned about Martin Luther King at school? And she said, well, Martin Luther King Jr. thought that all people should be treated well that every person matters. And then she said, he did good work while he was alive, but we still struggle with that today. Every person matters, but we still struggle with that today. Man, simple truths out of the mouths of children. When we consider discipleship, there is this balance that we have to strike, this balance between being and doing. This being and doing balance is difficult to strike. See, being a disciple involves a commitment to humility, a commitment to compassion, a commitment to presence, and more. That being part of discipleship seems simple, but being isn't something over which we have great control. Being is what happens when we create disciplines and habits and regular choices 
about what we do. Now, that doing of discipleship is, for many reasons, a bit clearer. Although sometimes the doing of discipleship can seem even harder. The doing of discipleship actually involves acts and practices and habits that reinforce the love which Jesus calls us into as disciples. In other words, acting with humility, acting with compassion, and being present forms us, with God's help, to become the disciples that Jesus calls us to be. That becoming does not happen in a moment, but that becoming can happen over time. Each one of us has opportunities to do good acts of discipleship every day. We just have to be open to those opportunities because they may not quite be what we expect. Now, there is a beautiful spot outside the Sydney Harbor in Australia. This beautiful spot outside the harbor is where cliffs Sheer cliffs go down to the ocean, and you can see for miles and miles the vista is gorgeous. And it is one of the top, most popular tourist spots in all of Australia. These gorgeous cliffs give people a view for miles. And yet these gorgeous cliffs have a dark side. These cliffs, where so many go to enjoy the view, is also a place where many go to take their own lives each year. In fact, more people do that at this spot in Australia than anywhere else in the country each year. Now, across the street from these cliffs, a man named Don lived, and he knew the beauty of these cliffs, and he also knew the tragic reality of these cliffs as well. And as a young man, Don began trying to help those who came to the cliff edge out of desperation, looking for a quick end. Now, as individuals would walk up to the cliff's edge, Don would see them from his house, and he would hurry out of his house and then approach them slowly with a simple smile and ask, would you come in for a cup of tea? And if they accepted his offer, Don would take the people into his home where they would just have a chat. Over tea, no counseling, no advising, no prying, just one human being to another, lending an ear just to listen. Now, of course, some of the people had mental illnesses or physical illnesses, or they were just going through such a rough patch that they just weren't sure what to do. And for many, a listening ear, a person who showed some care, was enough to change their mind, and they would turn back home. Now, Don didn't manage to save everyone, of course. Some were already gone by the time he had rushed to the cliff's edge, or some rejected his invitation altogether, yet Don didn't let those missed opportunities weigh him down. He said once in an interview that he did his best with each person, and if he lost one, he accepted that there was nothing more that he could have done. Now, Don did this small act of kindness kindness, countless times over almost 50 years of living there in that house, talking to people who would come to that cliff's edge, extending a helping hand, giving them a listening ear, showing them compassion. And Don saved more than 400 people in the process. Now, Don's story might seem like an extreme example of discipleship opportunities, but we have similar opportunities every day to show people love, to help people know that they matter. There are people that we see, those we see and remain hidden, who need us to be kind who need us to be interested, who need us to simply be present. And when we do, we can make a big difference in their lives. 
every person matters, which also means you matter. You matter to me. You matter to this community. You matter to God. Every person matters. And we can lift all of our voices and sing praises to God together to help make this world a better place the way we wish this world to be. We are called by Christ to be his disciples and together we can answer his call again. We can choose to follow Christ again today and this week, becoming like Christ in the process. Every person matters. Let's make sure this week, every person knows. Amen.